How? How is this Pokemon allowed to exist? What are these stats? It's not like the game had power creep and Game Freak needed to make a legendary Pokemon to kind of keep in line with all the crazy special attackers out there. No, they just went, let's make the best physical tank ever. Let's also make it like the third best special tank at the same time because the ruin abilities just don't make any sense. 125 defense, but also the opponent loses 75% special attack. And our special defense is still good. Like, this needs to be 45 special defense to be acceptable. And even then, I have problems with this Pokemon's physical durability. And then 110 attack, so it can actually truck. And the 155 hit points is some of the highest we've seen in the game. So, like, you just press a button right there. It just, it just, you, how? Normally, there's a drawback. Normally, something makes sense. None of this makes sense. And then you hit the defense. When you hit defense, you see Pokemon that have drawbacks. Toxpex has 50 hit points, 152 special defense. Avalog has 46 special defense and not as much hit points. And then you scroll down and like, all right, you gotta go a little ways. But even then, we've talked about how the stats are so ridiculous. It, it's just absurd. We have one of if not the best physical tank, just outright in the game. The only Pokemon that comes close is Dondozo, and it's still 15 base stat points down between hit points and defense, and doesn't get a free Assault Vest. Let's, let's really put this one into perspective. So I just kind of made like, here's damage. Here's a 120 attack Pokemon hitting you with a stab 100 base power move. And it's a five hit KO from something that innately powerful. And on the special side, it's a four hit KO. We're not even invested into special. How is this possible? Also, for those of you who didn't believe me, all right, let's go and get rid of that ability and then we'll go and put in the assault vest and we can see that it's pretty much an assault vest on that extra durability you get. It goes from 27 to 24. Now, I wanted to compare Tinglu's defense to Blissey's special defense, and it's crazy. So we have like 20 to 24% versus 14 to 16% on a full special defense Blissey. Actually, I didn't even do the natures, so we can plug that in and then just get more out of this Pokemon. So that's crazy. And this is not what you want to do on the Blissey. And as you can see why, if we cut away all those, we're effectively taking the same amount of damage. So pretty much no matter what your Blissey is gonna be running, you have to go 2v2 in defense. And then something magical happens. We're just doubling our physical durability. So looking at this, we're still taking fat physical hits on the Blissey and Tinglu isn't taking as big of a special hit, even though it's not investing in the special. And then we do something similar on the Tinglu. So I just kinda wanna see the overall durability, just go 2v2, 2v2. It's just better. Like, that's nuts. So pay attention to the physical on the top right here, 21, but because our hit points are so inflated, drops to 18. So you just you just don't care about that. And now we have a Pokemon that against this kind of damage analog, it's just max defense, max special defense. I'm wondering if maybe there's like something weird, like do we go 200 here and then like 60? So I was the first person to discover how to optimize defensive EVs back in Generation 6, and even though I've talked about it a lot, it's mostly something that people just try to get a feel for, but there hasn't been any like serious work put into completely solving like EV optimizations in Pokemon, and it kind of happens with Ting Lu, because the inflated hit point stat and all these other weird interactions makes it kind of weird. So we look right here, we have 22.1, 21.1, so 43.2. And then if we actually do this, it becomes 43.3. .3. So we just kind of fabricate one effective hit point between defense and special defense. Yeah, I couldn't really find anything else to do with the Ting Lu because yeah, our defenses are actually so close to our hit points after you factor in like the Vessel of Rune and the other stats. It's not as obvious as it is with Pokemon like Driftbloom, so, but there is still like some weird stuff going on with this Pokemon. So yeah, that's the durability. It's almost physically a Blissey, while almost specially just being a really, really good tank Pokemon. And much like a Blissey, you kind of don't just want to do something like this because you're just losing out on effective durability while not really like turning a six hit KO into a seven hit KO somewhere along the line. So you might as well just kind of go for the optimization and maybe it matters. If you ever survive on one hit point, you know who to thank. 
So let's finally get into the moveset. And I think that this Pokemon is so ridiculously tanky that worrying about the stats is actually more important than worrying about the moveset because we kind of have like a weird restrictive kind of move sets where we don't do all kinds of crazy stuff like it's a ground type pokemon so it's gonna kind of want to earthquake but also if you're a tank you just play it like a tank dondozo garganasol all these other like ridiculous pokemon have turned it into a fissure meta so fissure is just like the best option on this pokemon if you're a four or five hit ko then why not just swing and go for like that 30 percent chance you just immediately ko something also with 110 attack if you're not fully investing into it, you're gonna have a hard time taking out Pokemon like Dondozo, like the Garganasol, and just any other super beefy tank Pokemon, especially if it has Recover or some kind of Sustain, or if a Slowbro starts Iron Defensing on you. You can't take it out any other way, so like Fissure is just your best DPS, or DPT, damage per turn. There's also a lot of people that irrationally hate using one-hit KO moves for no reason. It's like peak Dunning-Kruger mounts stupid levels when it comes to Pokemon community, and I can never understand it. I just explained why one-hit KO moves are so good, because if you don't have any other way of taking out Pokemon that's become unkillable, that's the balance. It also kind of further proves why Smogon is just a nonsensical format for babies and casuals. It makes sense if you've been indoctrinated by those bad players and then you're lashing out against good strategies like the ones I talk about in my video, but for some reason Pokemon is just like ignorant and toxic for all the wrong reasons, and I try to correct that with my videos, which is why you like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. But yeah, like, what do you do against this? How, how, how do you stop it? You don't. The Fissure's coming and Ting Lu is just gonna win. Also we have Ruination. Does damage equal to half of the target's current hit points? 90% accuracy is weird. So Ruination is going to effectively do the same thing, but give you that consistency. Cut the opponent's hit point in half, go for the Throat Chop. That has like a lot of KO combo potential. It's also a really good way of burning through the opponent's recovers. That eventually, they're going to run out of recovers in the face of Ruination, and then you can just Throat Chop them down. Or if the Pokemon doesn't have any main natural sustain, you got 110 attack. You don't have to invest into that to actually do like 30, 40, 50% of a Pokemon's health just outright with a stab throat chop. So this just this just hits everything. This is going to take out tanks and it's going to combo out sweeping Pokemon and you're still bulky enough to survive into a rest and then Chesto Berry. And like we've learned with Don Dozo, Don Dozo can just rest, no Chesto, wake up and still obliterate you. It's silly what inflated durability stats we are seeing in Generation 9. And then we have Terra Flying because of all the Fissure shenanigans I just talked about. So let's actually sort by Fissure and just kind of see how these speed tiers get because now it gets really ugly. Don Dozo, 35 speed. Garganasol, 35 speed. Will Mudsdale find playability? I don't even know. And then we have Ting Lu, which loses out to Hip Hout on unless you speed creep. And that's kind of all that matters. So, there's also a world where you can, like, cut some hit points and then, like, get speedy speedy. Alright, so here's a hippo. Here's maybe where hippo, like, speed creeps or something, so we need to catch 69. And, yeah, that means we're actually putting 36 speed EVs into the 45 base speed Pokemon. It was at zero IVs, which is why it looked weird, so make sure you have max speed on Ting Lu. Forget about Trick Room or any weird stuff like that. Don't worry about Payback. Throat Chop is good enough. And then you actually need to Speed Creep 36 Speed EVs on the 45 Speed Tank Pokemon just so you can feel better in the Fissure matchup. Ugh. Gen 9 is ugly. And that's, that's kind of all there is to it. You just, you just play this thing like a not unaware Dondozo that can eat special hits better and is just tankier. And you're just kind of anti-everything possible. You're just the anti-existence Pokemon. Um, people might want to get fun and cute with the Ting Lu on something like the Assault Vest. Since we're stacking Assault Vest with Vessel of Ruin, we want to get more into the defense. We kind of just want to have a little bit of a hit points cushion for both stats, though, and then max out the hit points and see what you do. This is just kind of like a direct, straightforward offensive Pokemon. Uh, you're running it in the same way that you would kind of run a Regirock with Assault Vest. 
Now you don't see Assault Vest Regirock find that much success, but Ting Lu is just better in every way. Probably taking about the same amount of physical damage, but then way less special damage, and you have slightly more attack on better coverage. You know, rock type Pokemon, they're kind of weird because you have Rock Slide, which is just going to be a low base power move, or you have to go for the Stone Edge, which can then miss and kind of undo everything. So Regirock Stone Edge is going to be two hit KOing a lot, but if you're going to keep on rolling like that 80% chance, it's not feeling good. Ting Lu has Stab Earthquake and a Dark type move, extra little bit of coverage on that Heavy Slam, and with the Assault Vest, you can retain Fissure, because why not? They have like a Calm Mind Iron Defensing Pokemon or a Curse Amnesia Pokemon, you can just absorb hits and then throw out the Fissure again on something that is otherwise unkillable. That's how good Oko moves are right now, and that's how insane Ting Lu is where you go Assault Vest one shot. It's wild, and you can just keep on swinging because you're so durable. A uh, heavy slam for like those fairy type Pokemon, Sylveon comes in, you don't care. Now if we go deeper into what Ting Lu wants and doesn't want, we can find a good Terra typing, and like water is just going to be awesome. If we're going Assault Vest Vessel of Ruin, Electric and Grass types are primarily going to be special attackers, and we are just completely locking them out. And even the occasional like physical hit from those types, we are fine. Don't worry, bro. And Terra Water is going to invalidate Chain Pao's super effective hits against us. So yeah, do this. It's going to be great. Um, as for other things on Ting Lu, like it can run Whirlwind, but like why phase when you can just fissure? You can have Citrus Berry, but why do that when you can Chesto Resto? Or straight up get more effective health from the Assault Vest and then maxing out your direct physical durability. Like, this is just better. I guess the difference is, like, this can also run more status moves, but, like, we've kind of talked about the strong pros of Ting Lu. I don't know why anyone would throw that away, especially with, like, a Stealth Rock or... There's nothing else you really want here. And then to finish off the video, I want to show you guys the absolute filth we are dealing with in this Pokemon. Jet Punch from a Life Orb, Palafin, Hero, barely two hit KOs us, and actually doesn't in some cases. Wave Crash is a 50% chance to Oko, and this is as bad of a matchup as it can get. Also, we're dealing with like Adamant Assault Vest, we're kind of showing off like, what happens if you're just running damage on the Ting Lu? You have a better chance to two hit KO the Palafin in return. Also, Palafin is going to be taking so much damage that there's actually a chance that like Life Orb plus Wave Crash Recoil, if Ting Lu survives that 50% chance of the time and then throws the Earthquake, it wins? And I guess if you get tired of that 50% chance mattering, but it shouldn't because Palafin's actually like a really bad Pokemon and people shouldn't be running it so it's not that common, maybe you just flip it around 252 and then 196, so now dropping that chance to KO a bit more, but even then, like, still taking enough recoil, life orb, all that stuff, and our damage doesn't get cut that much either. So it's one of those things to where, like, you coin flip the survival, so Palafin takes more damage to itself, and then you're hitting harder, but also this just kind of covers for everything and still wrecks other Pokemon. Now, this damage calculation made me think something was wrong. Like, I put in numbers wrong, this has to be fake, none of it makes any sense. So, max hit points, whatever defense investment, impish nature, assault vest, and we don't get one shot by a sort of ruin choice ban Chin Pao. How is that possible? And going back to the natural attack investment, we have a two hit KO onto the Chin Pao. Now, we're never going to get a chance to actually play out that matchup because we get two shot in return, but the idea is like finding these weird damage numbers. So against an 80-80, which is more average-ish bulk, just 60 attack EVs gives us the two-hit KO on Earthquake. Also, like, comparing two-hit KO damage numbers in, like, most scenarios is another thing I've kind of discovered and pushed in Pokemon that hasn't gotten as much attention as it should. It's just all kinds of weird stuff. People just choosing to be ignorant in Pokemon, I don't get it. And Ting Lu just kind of so ridiculous, it captures everything. It captures EV efficiency, one hit KO moves, and then like the bare minimum to two shot, because that's all that matters. If you're doing 90% to an opponent, it's the same two hit KO, so those stats are wasted, or the item, or whatever. 
But yeah, this has to be fake, right? Except it isn't. And that's kind of like the thing where if we go Terra into water, so we do that, do that, the damage just becomes nothing on a resisted hit. And the same thing would happen to the, the Palafin. So that's why I really like the water typing because it's going to make that ice super effective, which is pretty common just into a resistance. Or it also turns the water super effective into a resistance, and then it makes the uh, fairy attack normal. Unfortunately, even with the Terra, we don't outright win the Sylveon matchup, but like, it's still absolutely ridiculous that even with the dark super effective hit, we survive a choice specs, pixelate, hyper voice, modest nature, max special attack Sylveon, which is one of the hardest hitting things in the game. And if we get rid of our dark typing, it barely, well not barely, but there's like a chance that it isn't a three hit KO. And it's max hit point invested, so us still also doing a lot of damage to it in return with the earthquakes is pretty crazy. Oh wait, we have heavy slam. So we eat a hyper voice, heavy slam, eat a hyper voice, heavy slam, Sylveon's KO'd, we're still at 30%, which means we survive another hit. Oh yeah, forgot about the throat chop, which is kind of the main reason why you run it, is so you can shut down a Sylveon. So the heavy slam trading has its own benefit in that like you just catch him on two heavy slams, but the throat chop forces the switch, but doesn't have a two hit KO. Depends on game state. You still just do wild things with this. Ting Lu is not okay, and I am exhausted. It's taken over two hours to get this point, I haven't even edited the video yet. Just off like the technical analysis and trying to like get the right recording and stuff and setting everything up, but man, you go deep in the weeds on this Pokemon and it's just ugly. And it's one of those things to where you can kind of stumble into this on your own and you don't need to know all the other background stuff behind it. Same thing for the first move set I threw. So like that conclusion takes a couple minutes, but then like proving the theory and making sure you're not crazy it takes a little bit of extra time, like lo looking through everything and just going, wow. It is as busted as I initially thought, and there's actually, like, no flaws whatsoever. Nuh-uh. So, so, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. <laughs> Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.